Hey guys, a user identifies who you are on a Linux system and we can organize our users into groups. Now a user will always have one primary group by default and that is the same name as the username. Other groups that a user may be a member of would be called supplementary groups. So let's go and get our hands dirty right now. So as the administrative user, what I'm gonna do is create a bunch of users. So let's go and use the user add command. And one thing I just wanna show you, I'm gonna backspace a little bit over here. I'm gonna type in user and I'm gonna hit tab twice. And I wanna show you all the different uh, commands that begin with user. And some of the commands that we could use are include user add to add users. User del, self-explanatory, to delete users. And we also have user mod that would modify the properties of an existing user. So at this stage, I'm going to use user add in its simplest form. I'm going to create a user called John. And there we go. Now, if you wanted to get more information about the user John, you could use the id command. So I could say id John, and it would reveal the properties of that user. So what we can see over here is that uh, we have the user id set to 1001. Now, Everything is identifiable in a system numerically, and uh, user accounts are no exception. So a UID is the numerical identifier that represents a user. And you can see that user ID 1001 is for the John user. And then we can see the GID, or the group ID. Again, uh, this is a numerical identifier representing the user's primary group. This is really important. So um, here we have 1001, and that is the group John. So like I said, when you create a user, that user is automatically made a member of a group, and that would be the primary group of that user, which is set to their username. Now, any other group is called a supplementary group, and it's indicated with groups equals. So what we're going to do right now is that we're going to add a group. So let's going to use the uh, group add command. And again, if you want to find out more about the different group commands that we have, just type in group on its own, hit tab twice, and you can see very similarly to the user add, user mod, and user del commands, we have group add, group del, and group mod. So let's going to have some fun right now. So we're going to say group add, and we're going to create a group called the Beatles. Now, John is not a member of the group Beatles. Well, not at this stage. And that's exactly what we are going to be doing. So remember that when you add a user, the user is not a member of any other groups other than the group that represents their own user account. And we can make use of the user mod command to change the properties of a user account. So that's exactly what we are going to do. So we're going to say user mod right now, and we're going to append to the secondary group membership list. We're going to append the group Beatles for the user John. And remember, the argument is always going to be the thing that we are affecting. So we are modifying a user called John. So it's not Beatles. Beatles doesn't come last. So let's go and uh, run the ID command over here against John. And we can see that something has changed. And uh, we could see that after groups, it will list two things. It's going to list John's primary group. And then it's also going to go and list um, the, su the supplementary group, or one of the supplementary groups, which is Beatles. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, go and give John a password. Of course, John needs to log into my system right now. And we can allocate a password using the passwd command. So let's go and say passwd. Now, if I were to hit enter at this stage, I'd be changing my own password. Now, because I'm logged in as the root user, I could change the password of another user. So I could say passwd John, and now we are changing the password for that user. So let's go and type in uh, red hat as the password. And I know that it's a bad password. We're going to follow through with that anyway. And there you go. So now I can go to John and say, listen up here, mate. Here's your username. Your password is John. And when you log into the system, all processes, of course, are going to execute uh, with the permissions of the John user. And John is also a member of a group called Beatles and therefore has the same access privileges that the Beatles group has. So let me give you an example of, uh, of a deletion command. We're going to go ahead right now and we're going to delete um, the, the user John. So we're going to say user Dell. And then John, nice and simple. Now, when you delete a user, the user's uh, data is not automatically deleted. And that's, that could be a, a very good thing. So the home directory would remain behind, as well as all the other files that have been created by that particular user. Also, what I'm going to do right now is go and uh, delete the, well, let's go and delete the group. So we're going to use the group del command, and we're going to delete a group called Beatles. And you can see that the group is no longer uh, on my system. The transaction went through. And again, this is because we don't have an error message telling us otherwise. Now, all the user account information is stored inside of a file called Etsy passwd. And as you can tell, it's below the Etsy directory, so it has to be a configuration file. So this is the configuration file that we have uh, for our user accounts. Now, there's nothing 
um, terribly sensitive about uh, the users in terms of their passwords. Even though it's called passwd, that is not where we store passwords. So just to show you the contents of that file, I'm going to use the grep command. I'm going to show you the entry that exists for the student user inside of uh, passwd. And you can see, yeah, there's nothing about a password over here. Just a bit of a spoiler, the password for the student user is student. Further to that, if you are interested in password-related information, um, we store that kind of data inside of another configuration file called shadow. And it's also in the Etsy directory. And this over here, this long string, let's go and highlight that for you, that represents the user's hash. Group-related information is stored inside of a separate file. It's called Etsy group. And again, it just shows you what the Etsy directory is used for, for configuration files. So let's go and have a look at that. So I'm going to show you the entry that exists for a group called wheel inside of a Etsy group. And you can see over here that we have uh, the group wheel. And you can see that over there is a numerical identifier representing the group's ID. And the user student is a member of the group wheel. Should you ever want to change privileges, you could uh, make use of a command called sudo. Sudo allows you to run commands as another user. And because the student user is a member of the group wheel, I can do exactly that by default on a rel8 machine. So let's go and try that right now. So I'm going to say sudo, and I'm going to show you the, uh, uh, the entry that exists inside of, let's go and run the grep command. And we're going to show the entry that exists inside of uh, Etsy shadow for the student user. Now it prompts me for my own password. It wants to check that I am in fact the student user. And you can see that we have a success result, because that command was being executed as the root user. So let's go and try and repeat that command without uh, going via sudo. And you can see immediately, I get a permission denied. Because the grep command is running with the privileges of the student user. Now the cool thing about sudo is that I could also go and run commands as other users. Let me give you an example. So I'm going to say sudo dash u and I'm going to run a command um, as a completely different user. I'm just going to choose a user called cockpit ws. And the command that I'm going to run is who am I? Now, typically, when you run who am I on its own, it will tell you who you are currently logged in as. So I'm going to run uh, who am I without going via sudo. And you can see that normally it would return student. But because I said explicitly that we're going to run the sudo command, we're going to run a command as another user. That user, dash u, is cockpit ws. And you can see the command that I'm running is who am I? And you can see that the output is completely different. Of course, if you don't use the dash, uh, dash u, it's going to assume root as it is over there. I'm going to show you how you could go and switch user accounts. So I'm going to use the su command. And the dash over here is very important. I'm going to be switching user accounts right now. And I'm going to do it for the user root. Now it's going to ask me for a password. And this is the user's password that I would like to switch to. So the root password is red hat. And there you go. And if you type in who am I right now, I'm logged in as root and I have a root shell. Now to return to the previous state, I can always go and hit exit. I'm lazy. I've just typed in Control D. Control D always kind of means exit or log out. Uh, and I'm returned to my previous state, the state where I am logged in as student. So with that, guys, it does bring this video to an end. I will see you in the next chapter.